Welcome back to Aces World of Math. We are here talking about the mean of differences, and we're going to formalize it right now, and then we're going to go through and talk about an example. So, with that being said, the distribution of differences here basically falls like this. You're going to have a dot plot, you've got zero. Everything to the left is going to be a negative difference, everything to the right is going to be a positive difference, and no difference is zero. Though I forgot to do that on my sheet from the first part, so my apologies. So again, here, no difference. Okay, so here is negative. Here is positive. Now again, I'm going to put over here just for my own use. This is the story method. This is the, my rereading method. Okay, and that's just kind of keep in my head, okay, I've got more over here. I'm going to expect to see evidence towards that end. As a reminder of the statistics, I have x bar difference and then standard deviation of the difference. And again, calculating these things are going to be exactly like you do for like a regular one sample. You can stick them into applet, stick them in your calculator, one one variable tests or uh, one variable um, calculations, things like that. Number two, again, confidence interval for paired data. Nothing really surprising here. The name, one sample t interval for the difference of means. Specific formula, same as the original one, except that I've got differences here to make it very clear that you know that you're talking about doing differences. I usually get a question here sometimes we'll say, well, what happens if I forget to do that and I just run it as a one sample t interval? And for the most part, I believe, and if you happen to be a grader, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, I believe that you should get at least three out of the four points, if not all four. Because again, you're going through the same thing. You're inter as long as you do all the interpretations and stuff correctly, that's fine. Um, so I'm not saying that to ignore it, because obviously you don't want to give one point away if you can. But again, just remember, any time you're going through and doing something like this, where you're subtracting for one person, so this is one teenager, I'm subtracting two teenagers, et cetera, et cetera, that's going to be a mean of differences. When you're starting with two different populations, that's going to be the difference of the means. And that's the difference between those two. Things. Okay, so the check your understanding here is going to be about how much time teenagers actually spend online versus how much their parents perceive that they're spending online. Okay, and so there's all this data here. We've done the differences for you. And so go ahead and go through this, calculate out what we're asking to calculate out, and then run the confidence interval, and we'll see you in a few minutes. All right, so first of all, we're making the dot plot. Dot plot, nice and flat. It's the difference between actual minus parental perception. No big outliers, it's flat, so we're gonna be okay with that section of the confidence interval checks, okay? The numbers here, again, I'm just averaging out those 10 numbers there, so I come up with 3.02. My um, standard deviation is gonna be 1.32. So again, the context, in context, what that is, is the amount of actual time spent online was 3.202, oops, I forgot that, more, than parents thought. Okay. Um, so, construct the confidence interval. Here's your first two steps. Mu is the uh, mu difference, the true mean difference in uh, time spent online, A minus P. There's my statistic. Confidence level is 90%. My plan, I'm going to do a one sample t interval for the difference of means. Random, it says random sample 10 teenagers, gotta love that. 10%, 10 is definitely less than one tenth of all teenagers. And then for normal, we have no, since we don't have large counts and we don't have a number bigger than 30, we don't have a number bigger than 30 and it doesn't say that the population is normal, then we have to go to how does the pattern look? And the pattern, there's no strong outliers as I said, so we're good to go there. For your point estimate, margin of error, um, point estimate plus margin of error, x bar difference plus or minus. So again, general, specific. And then from there, we plug in the numbers. Degrees of freedom is going to be 9 because we have 10, so 10 minus 1 is going to be 9. And then that gives us a, an interval between 2.25 and 3.79. And so our conclusion then, before I run off to class, is going to be this. We are 95% confident that the interval from 2.25 to 3.79 hours, again, context, captures the true mean difference, A minus P, actual minus perceived, in time spent online. 
So that's it for confidence intervals. We are done doing confidence intervals for means. We're going to probably wrap things up. You guys may have a test on this coming up, and then we're going to start doing significance tests. So we'll talk to you soon. Again, if you have any questions, drop them below. Email your teacher, email me, or yeah, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. We'll talk to you soon.